Hello, Star Seeds, Soul Tribe, and Soul Family. How are you all doing? I am doing great. I'm back with another message for us from God. So let me just go ahead and pray, and we're going to get right into this message. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come humbly before your throne. God, we ask that you forgive us of all of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We ask that you lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. We reverence your holy name. You are holy. You are wonderful. You are great. You are majestic. You are sovereign. Thank you, Lord God, for all your love and kindness toward us, all your unconditional love, your compassion, your grace, and your mercy, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor, God. We reverence your holy name. We exalt your holy name, God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be worshipped, Lord. We thank you, God. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. You make us lie down in green pastures. You lead us beside the still waters. You restore our souls. You lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadows of death, we will feel no fear no evil, for you are with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our, our heads with oil, and our cups are running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Holy Spirit, Spirit guides, angel guides, archangels, and ancestors, we welcome you into this message. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. I ask that you speak now through me to give a word to your people, God. Let us know what we need to see and what we need to know in this perfect moment and hour that you have us in, Lord. We thank you. We give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. All right, so I'm going to... Please like, share, and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are glad to have you. And for the returning subscribers, thank you for coming back and supporting the channel and being a part of the Soul Family and Tribe and Star Seeds. Um, I am. I have put the the Healing Truth messages on hold right now until after the holidays I really I love the holiday season so I want to enjoy that with my family and friends um, so I will get back started after the new year and I'll let you know when that date is but all the ones that I have received up until today I will um, send those messages out to you so no worries about that all right so let's get into this message the name of this message is, it's called, Accept What God Allow. Put it in His hands. He has the master plan. All right. So, what God is telling us today is that He wants us to let go of the past um, and I know that's easier said than done but he wants us to sit with this message and to take the time you know from here from now on out to the maybe it may take to the end of January for some of you all depending on you know, the severity and the depth of things that you need to let go within that you've been carrying for years, months, weeks, days, hours, whatever. Um, he really wants us to detox from everything that has happened to us leading up to our lives to this very moment. Um, no matter what your age is, he really needs us to 
understand that everything that has happened has been for a reason. Nothing is happened has happened by coincidence. Everything has happened for a reason and according to his plan and his purpose for your life. So it wasn't to harm you or, you know, to weaken you or anything like that, but it was to make you stronger, to make you better, to understand who you really are and who you belong to, to develop your character, your integrity, your unconditional love, your compassion, um, because you belong to him. You are his star seeds. You are his chosen. You are his earth angels. You are his light workers. You are the chosen generation that he has sent into the earth to make a difference, to bring souls to him so that they may be, be saved and so that they would have life and life more abundantly. And he has chosen us to complete this divine mission so in order to take us to where he's taking us next we had to be we had to go through a training ground we had to be equipped and ready um to rule to be rulers and to receive all the promises that he has promised to us He had to take us through all of this to renew our minds, to open our heart space so it will be fully open unto him and not closed off so that we can be able to hear his instructions, hear his guidance, hear his word, hear his heart for his children who are lost and who have, you know, been derailed off their path or just don't get it yet so he have chosen us and trained us for this battle trained us for this mission so he wants us to do not take this things that has happened personal he's asking us to accept what God allows put it all in his hand because he has the master plan. So an example, um, I used to be in the military. And so when I first went to boot camp, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know. I just, you know, knew what the recruiters told me and other people who have went to the military, you know, told me what it was going to be a what it would be like but you know everybody's experience is different so um but when I went in I was weak (laughs) um I couldn't do that many push-ups or sit-ups you know of you know the physical part of it but I was trained so when you're in the military they train you for war situations they train you for battle So you have to go through a lot of vigorous, you know, physical training and also mental because your mental has to be in alignment with your physical in order for you to carry out everything that you need to do if you're in a battle or a war situation. So if any of you have had that experience, then you know what I mean. Um, but it's all to get you stronger, to train you what you need to do in battle, to train you to fight against the enemies that we have in this world. Um, and so the same thing in the spiritual sense, everything that God has taken us through has equipped us for the battle, uh, to equip us to win this war, to But the war, the spiritual war has already been won. The spiritual battle has already been won. So it's pretty much equipping us in the spirit, in our spiritual being, in our souls, in our our hearts 
and renewing our minds to understand that we have the victory. The battle has already been won. So God had to renew our minds with everything that he has taken us through to this point. So now we're at the moment of everything that we've been through. We're at the end of the year and this year has been the most intense year that I've ever had in my life. Um, this is a year that caused me to recognize like the things that I had been through, that I went through with people um, and just, you know, certain situations. This is a year that taught me and revealed to me who I really am, revealed to me my purpose, revealed to me um, my divine mission revealed to me how much God really loved me. Like I knew that God loved me before, but this year right here has really opened my eyes. Have the scales have really, you know, fallen off my eyes. And so the people that he used to drive me into my purpose, to drive me into my anointing, I can be mad at them and take it personal, but I was actually a catalyst and all of you all too, his chosen ones, his star sees his light workers, his chosen generation. We are actually a catalyst to bring forth change into the earth. So not only did what I went through with people opened my eyes to realize who I really am, it also triggered them to be spiritually awakened as well. Um, So God pretty much uses us as a catalyst of change. Uh, We're pretty much, you know, walking karma. um, Because when we come into people's lives, their lives are forever impacted. And so are ours too. So I can hold grudges. I can, you know what I'm saying, be mad. I can let my ego get in the way. Like, how dare you, you know, treat me like that or do me this way after I was being, you know, so nice and loving and compassionate towards you, treated you with unconditional love, you know, would bend over backwards, do anything for you. How dare you treat me like that? You know, so I can let my ego get in the way and just stay mad and just stay, you know, holding on to the past, clinging on to the past so I cannot experience anything new in my life. So God is wanting us to let go of the past, detox from it, everything that has happened from this moment back. Let it go because he's taken us somewhere new. Um, He said in his word in Isaiah 43 and 18 through 19, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. So he's telling us to forget everything that has happened. He's doing a new thing. Do not dwell on the past. Now it springs up the new thing that he's doing, that he's trying to take us to. Um, He's saying, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So everything that was stuck in your life, everything that was held up, delayed, is going to be, he's making a way for us now. In all the dry places of our lives, he's, making streams in our desert and making them way in the wilderness. But in order for him to take us through to this new dimension and this new place that he wanted to take us through to our minds had to be renewed. So forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. He's saying that your ego can't go any further for what God is trying to wants to take us next. 
God is doing a new thing. He's saying purpose, your divine mission is the only way forward. So for where he's taking us next, you can't go with all this baggage. Like you got to let this stuff go. You got to leave your baggage. Like we're at the point of the Red Sea where he's about to part the Red Sea and us to walk over on dry land into our promised land. But you can't take all this stuff through the Red Sea. Let go of all this baggage. And he's telling us this because he does he do not want us to miss the opportunity of our lifetime. Um and he's not asking you to let your guards down. He still wants you to have healthy boundaries, you know, dealing with people, places, and things. He still wants you to follow your intuition over your emotions. But as, as far as the ground warfare that we have been fighting, you know what I'm saying, fighting with people, fighting with places, things, um, jobs, family issues, he's telling us to walk away from that. Um, in the previous messages that I've done, like probably like six or seven months ago, I remember in one of the messages, I think it was the crown of contentment. We get tripped up a lot, like our path and our, you know, the things that God wants to do with us get delayed a lot because we have this misconception of, you know, and this is what we have been taught family over everything. But a lot of times family holds you up from your blessings. Um, Sometimes intentionally because they're jealous and envious and a lot of times intentionally um, because that's all they've ever known, you know, of how to be. But if your family is causing you to miss your blessings, to cause you you know, causing you to be stressed out and worried and, you know, always going through drama and, you know, family disputes and issues and people, you know, not having their lives together and they're, you know, want you to stop what you're doing all the time and take care of them, you know, bend over backwards for them. But then when you're in need and need something, nobody's there for you. Um, so you got to realize where we are now, who your real family is. It's not the family that's coming at you in devil energy. You know what I'm saying? Coming at you in devilish intentions. You got to know your, your real family by the spirit. So, you know, just like when Jesus said people were coming to him saying, Lord, 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 Lord. And he was like. I never knew you. Depart from me. I I don't know you. So you got to know your family by the spirit. Because everybody who, you know what I'm saying, there's a lot of people walking around in wolves and sheep clothing, acting like they, you know, operating in the spirit of God and the love of God. But their whole demon up under their mask, behind their mask. And that could be your family members also. So you got to be very discerning in this time of who you need to let go and who you need to hold on to. Um, Yeah, because, you know, the devil can be operating in your family members, in your children, your mothers, your fathers, your cousins, aunties, brothers, sisters, whoever. But if they're trying to derail you off your path and keep you from, you know, going into your promise, you have to let them go. You have to let that baggage go. Lay them burdens down and walk away. Um, Pray for them and keep it moving because your soul deserves peace and you deserve all the blessings and the promises that God have ordained for you have set for you especially if you're being obedient to him and to his plan and purpose 
for your life. You don't deserve to be held up trying to people please everybody that don't have your best interests in heart or in their mind. So God is saying, um, use your intuition. He has made you a caring and loving person with unconditional love, you know, nurturing. Ambitious and focused and loyal with many psychic abilities and creative for a reason. He has made you that way, but he don't want you to let people walk all over you. He don't want you to be a people pleaser. Um, he wants you to let people go. Follow your intuition. He has taken you through everything this year to develop your intuition and to so that you can be able to hear his voice clearly. You can be able to see dreams and visions and so God can lead and direct your path. Um, but don't let people take your kindness for weakness. Don't let people walk all over you like a doormat. Still have your healthy boundaries, but still walk in spirit and in truth and also in the love of God. Um, so God is saying to let everything go. Let it go. Let it go. So that you can enter into your promised land, into your new beginning. Let these burdens go. Lay them, lay them down at his feet. He has he said, accept what he allowed to happen. Put it all in his hands. He has the master plan. He has ordered the steps of all your days. He knows what's next. So he just wants us to enter into his rest and walk into our promised land with him. And I saw this on a movie one time. I can't forget, I forget what the name of the movie was, but it was a movie on Netflix. And um, these two girls, they were in a, a, they lived in a village. They was best friends. And one was considered evil because her her mother was a witch, and the other girl, you know, her her mother was a you know good citizen in the in the community or whatever, and so they wanted to go to these different schools of the school of good and evil. So, but they end up the girl that they that they shunned. In, the, in their village all the time because her mother was a witch. You know, they thought that she had an evil heart, evil spirit or whatever. And the one, the good girl, she, that she wasn't evil, that she was good, but they end up, these little things, these, um, you know, flying creatures or whatever came and picked them up to take them to the different schools, but they end up sending the girl that her mother was a witch dropping her off in a good school and you dropping the other one off, the one that they thought was a good girl in the evil school. And so, you know, both of them thought that they were in the wrong schools, but the teacher was like, y'all in the right schools. So, um, so the girl had got caught up in a curse because she wanted to be popular. She wanted to have status and clout and, you know, just superficiality and vanity or whatever. And so um, she had pretty much brought a curse upon herself. And so they was, the teacher was telling them how to break the curse is, is they said, what is the one thing that evil can never have that good can never do without? And the answer is true love. So God wants you to understand and know who you are walking your true love, walk in your spirit and truth and let go of these calamities and these burdens and these issues and, you know, lies that everything that exalt itself against the knowledge of God 
for your life and for what for how God sees you and what he thinks of you let go of all these lies that have been told on you told about you told to you about who you really are he wants you to to let go of all that let go and let God pretty much because God is going to take us to new atmospheres he's taking us to new places um so we had to have new ears new eyes to be able to hear and see what God is showing us and what he's telling us he wants us to um have a new perspective to look at things from an area view like an eagle looking down um following your intuition even though it goes against what you know you're experiencing now to trust God trust your intuition trust what he is telling you and so God is saying that let all of this stuff go so you can you know fly free and weightless like a bird like an eagle Um, he's saying that he's given us the air so pretty much speak what you want to manifest into existence speak the word of God in your atmosphere in your life so that you can experience the promises that he has for us experience the blessings that he has for us but he wants you to realize too that you are the blessing that you are the portal and so when you look at things from that perspective and when you do you do things from that perspective it changes things for you it gives you a whole new perspective like because when I was I was dealing with some stuff and God you know was giving me this message and I was kind of holding on to some things even though I wanted to let go but I just didn't know you know I know God promised you know said that he was going to do some things for me but then when I didn't know when and I was kind of like on edge or anxious about it of when it was going to happen but when he spoke to me and said the name of this message accept what God allow put put it all in his hands he has the master plan so I had to sit with this message for like a day So I can free myself to and detox myself from this whole year and all of the years previous so I can be free and operate in my purpose and my north node and know that God has my back because after all that has happened, after all that we've gone through, we are still standing. Nothing has overpowered us or overtaken us. God has fought all our battles against his enemies because they're not our enemies. They're his enemies. And he's never lost a battle. And we're living proof because we're still standing. Still blessed. So, um, that's all I have for us today. And you know what the Holy Spirit is saying? If you have you ever uh, read the the scripture in the Bible about the the uh, three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So where they were, King Nebuchadnezzar, he wanted them to bow down. He knew that they you know, follow Jesus, you know, follow God, but he wanted them to bow down to his foreign God, <clears throat> to their foreign gods that they had made. And so they told him, he told them, I'm going to throw you into this fiery furnace. 
if you all don't bow down and worship our idol gods. And so God wants us to be to the place, you know, of the three Hebrew boys that whatever happens, you know, just know that God got you. Um, They told him, they told King Nebuchadnezzar, you can throw us in this fire furnace because we're not about to bow down and serve no idol gods against our true and living God. We know who the the real true and living God is, so we're not about to bow down. So you can go ahead and throw us in this fiery furnace and burn us up or whatever. You know, God wants us at that place. That's the kind of faith that you have to have, that we have to have for where he's taking us next. Um, And they said to him, we know that our God can save us, but even if he don't, we know that he's able. So they stood on the word of God. They stood on that God would save them. They had faith. And so they put him in there. And then God allowed King Nebuchadnezzar's eyes to be open. And he looked into the fiery furnace and he was like telling one of his officials, I thought we put three people in there. And they was like, we did. And he said, I see a fourth one in there. It looks like the son of man. So Jesus was in there with them and they was not burned up. And so when they went to go open the door, the people who opened the door, they got burned up. But God was with them. Jesus was with them. So they went through the fire, but they didn't get burned. So God wants to have wants us to let go and be at that place with him now of, you know, trusting in him that he got us, that he all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. He's saying, rest, accept what God allows. Put it all in my hands. I have the master plan for your life. So he's saying nothing can separate us from the love of God, not death, not evil, not people, not situations, circumstances, none of that. Even if you die today, you still going to be with God. Nothing can separate you from God. So don't be afraid to what he's taking us into next. Just rest and let him work his plan in your life. And so that's all I have for us. Um, You all be blessed. And if I don't um, come with another message before the holidays, I want you all to have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Be safe. Enjoy your family time, your friends, um, your alone time. And love and light. Make sure you treat yourself and other people right. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.